What a glorious day we have here. Many of you do not know, but Robert Greene Ingersoll was the superstar of his day. People would pay a dollar to go hear his lecture. That was like paying a thousand dollars for a front row seat at a U2 concert. And let me tell you folks, I feel like a winner just being among the panel of wonderful people resurrecting the world, words of this great man, Robert Green Ingersoll. I, I will be reading from uh, three pieces of his. Uh, the first is titled Hereafter, uh, basically uh, religious criticism. But to, to ground it in the here and now, I include something on the separation of church and state from a piece titled God in the Constitution. And I want to end with a third piece, a passage from a third piece titled Some Reasons Why. This last one is, in my mind, an incredible celebration of humanism and realism. Robert Green Ingersoll. My friends, I tell you that the Orthodox Christian doctrine of eternal punishment in the hereafter is a hideous doctrine. I have no respect for the man who preaches it or pretends to you that he believes it. I have no respect for a man who will pollute the imagination of innocent childhood with this infamous lie. I will be frank with you and say that I hate this doctrine. I despise it. I loathe it. And what man of sense does not? It is the concept of hell is a concept born on one side with brutality and revenge, and on the other side, with errant cowardice. In my judgment, the American people are too brave, too generous, too magnanimous, too humane to believe in this outrageous doctrine of eternal damnation. For a great many years, the learned men of Christendom have been examining into the religions of other countries and other ages. They examine into the religions of Egypt, that of Greece, that of Rome and the Scandinavian countries. In the presence of the ruins of those religions, they declared these religions to be baseless, false, and fraudulent. But they had all passed away. Now, while this examination was being made, the Christianity of our day applauded. And when the learned men got through with the religions of other countries, they turned their attention to our religion. And by the same methods, by the same mode of reasoning, they were overturning the religion of our day. How is that? Because every religion is the work of man. Every book ever written was written by man. In 1776, our fathers endeavored to retire the gods from government. They declared that all governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. This was a contradiction of the then political ideas of the world. It was, as many believed, an act of pure blasphemy, a renunciation of the deity. It was, in fact, a declaration of the independence of the earth. It was a notice to all churches and priests that thereafter mankind would govern and protect themselves. Politically, it tore down every altar and denied the authority of every sacred book. The religion of the future is humanity. 
the religion of the future will say to every man, you have the right to think and investigate for yourself. Liberty is my religion. Everything that is true, every good thought, every beautiful thing, every self-denying action, all these make my Bible. Every bubble, every star are passages in my Bible. A constellation is a chapter. Every shining world is part of it. My Bible is all that speaks to man. Every violet, every blade of grass, every tree, every mountain crowned with snow, every throb of love, every honest action, everything that is good and true is my Bible, and upon that book I stand.